मॉर्निंग मिश्रा जी मॉर्निंग पांडे जी हावर यू ऑल गुड ऑल गुड डूइंग गुड ओके सो फाइनली यू गॉट द स्क्रिप्ट फॉर दिस हेल्थ हेल्थ इज चेक ऑफ द सिट्रिक्स योर वॉइस इज लो सर आई नॉट एबल टू हियर यू actually last day i was looking but did not get the script is easily is, available on internet sir okay yeah just search for call sold and you will get the power shell script let me share my screen even we also create you know those scripts we also take from the internet only who is going to save all those script nowadays right because you never know today you are doing one one script another day you need another script just mention uh, citrix health check then it will come citrix health citrix form citrix form yeah you will get that yes see first one first thing click on first one very popular script yeah or second one try second one calls calls hood not wood actually hood yeah <clears throat> yeah click there is bhish pitama of the citrix now type their powershell just go back type their powershell i think it's manual it's showing go to powershell yeah i'll check script powershell script spray ah click there i think you will get it yes type this one uh or go this one uh the uh, yeah i think this is the right one yeah github yeah this is a script sir okay yeah. just you can play around later on so here we need to add my uh, controller address yes so you have to go through with it first not only controller you have to provide many things yeah. okay you have to provide your mail id common mail id will be there right and you have to provide uh, your do dd uh, how many ddcs you have i think you, there will be one or two right because it's a small environment yes yes yeah so you have to change the values here see delivery controller see you have to uh, actually invest some time yeah. on it yeah yeah mm -hmm. so controller first with uh, so put a put a mention controller address yes right you have to mention license server also okay downside so just uh, review it and work on it it is very useful so if you need any script related with citrix bmware aws cloud azure cloud always try to search in github okay that's your, that should be your primary source for your uh, this thing okay so avinash i will be finishing this azure cloud today from monday onwards we will be starting aws workspace with the aws cloud understanding basic understanding okay so let me wind up things by providing you know but uh, i think uh, you need to cover two three my practical point life point just uh, nsg part and uh, it will be i see i have some doubt okay okay that uh, should be uh, created in the in the very part i have cleared Mm -hmm. I see. I have two virtual machines in different subnets, mm -hmm. and uh, both are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two. Uh, in it, two. The last day, they created two in it, and uh, one with two three is India zone and India zone two, and both mm -hmm. are uh, subnet is different. Mm -hmm. After pairing, now uh, uh, we are after pairing. 
Mm -hmm. So we can't ping each other. No, you cannot. What? You cannot. No, no. I am able ping from one machine to another machine. Oh, both are different subnet. Yes. What about NSG? NSG is not clear. Yeah, so actually, this is yeah. this is not the recommended solution. Actually, if you will allow completely VNet pairing, actually you have to control your uh, incoming outgoing traffic by NSG by firewall. You cannot open completely your VNet VNet pairing, and you are allowing one subnet. So I think uh, this one, this one, man. Uh -huh. Nothing. I can't see. Can you share? Have you shared any screen? You can't see it. If I go in network, yesterday I have created one day source to the very private appearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the same thing. How can I control the traffic? By NSG only. So NSG yeah. you are going to apply on your subnet. Okay. Yeah. Just search. Uh, go for uh, your subnet. Go any subnet. Open any subnet actually. Yeah. This is your subnet or this is your NSG. NSG. Open subnet, sir. Go to VNet. Go to virtual network first. So you have to understand the flow actually, how the communication work. Yes. Yeah. So VNet is the top level networking component. Inside that you have multiple subnet, and subnet will be controlled by NSG. One subnet, one NSG, for sure. Minimum one NSG is required for each subnet. In that way, you are going to. Control all your traffic. That's why we are getting micro segmentation in Azure Cloud or any cloud actually. Okay, so go into VNet one quickly and uh, search for. Click on subnet, left side, left side. Yeah, see subnet is written there, sir. Yeah, click on subnet. So this is your default subnet. Okay, click on default. so see this is your default subnet is created now what you want to do you want to as if you want to you want to associate this subnet with any nsg right how you are going to do that getting my point yes so yes. actually you have to associate your subnet with one of the nsg what you already created okay just click on the connected devices left side don't play around there yeah. connected devices left side Cancel it. Connected, connected devices, sir. So this is your machine, okay? Just click there. This is your uh, network interface card, okay? And just see the network security group. Click on left side, left side, NSG. Okay. So this is your NSG is bind and which is controlling all your traffic. Okay. Now go to NSG. Not, not this. Go to uh, overall NSG, yeah. NSG, yeah. And open the same NSG what you shown me. Not this one, sir. Not machine. Something was there, no? Yeah. Not this. Sir. Machine is this. Not machine. You name this NSG name. Last one. Just click on last. Go down. This last one, right? Uh, one or two. Any, anyone you can check. So see here. Now there are rules. Inbound rules, outbound rules, and there are priorities also through which you are going to control everything. Getting my point? So see here, you have uh, created RDP which working on three three port. You are allowing from anywhere source and destination, right? And you have six five triple zero. These are the inbuilt priorities. This is the top priority actually. So if you'll go, you know, uh, uh, allow VNet inbound, virtual network, 
virtual network vnet means okay you can see here as a uh, allow as your lb load balancer you might be created as your load balancer also right so see here the port any protocol any and as your load balance balancer source and destination anyone can access and create a new task yeah so try to create add add new thing yeah source any uh, good no no don't don't take any actually just try if it, something you get other things okay so there are different groups actually you can take ip address also you can define service tags also you can application security group also it will depend the requirement actually okay so in that way you can create those rules and you can play around okay so important part is first is your vm okay vm has its ip or nic that is part of one of the subnet subnet will be always controlled by nsg no traffic will be going directly subnet to another subnet no it will be always going through with nsg okay and if if that that control will be not there it's a security breach actually and let, go down go down i will show you nsg flow logs go down yeah click on there if some uh, yeah go to yeah machine to click on this machine to nsg yeah just keep make it on so actually it was initially not on switch it on yeah make sure that you disable this because it is chargeable okay okay yeah every hour um, um, off it make it off so when we required these things actually during troubleshooting you know network flow you heard about network flow yes yes I... yeah so net flow same thing is also available in azure cloud whenever suppose suppose you are not able to you know uh, there is a not communication is not happening something is not working then you are going to check the logs the net network flow or nsg flow logs all the troubleshooting you are going to do it okay peering means you are making one vnet to another vnet communication but that doesn't mean you are going to allow everything from one subnet to another subnet that's not the best practice you have to you control have to... Case mm -hmm. I have to add it in case we have two subnet in different mm -hmm. like one in the US and one in India. So how will that be? It means uh, in different zones. Just for example, uh huh. I am creating. so like vnet peering for different zones actually you're talking about right vnet zero one in india mm -hmm. i think uh, subnet will be default yeah yeah i got it see normal we just try to listen actually so there is a normal in the same zone same reason you are creating your vnet peering so there are global vnet peering also zone wise peering okay yeah. so for that you have to follow this documentation wait because that is different because it's a completely you know you are going from one zone or one region india to us or india to singapore kind of just open this document sir into your uh, zoom chat and try to understand this global vnet peering not whatsapp you want want whatsapp okay 
I can do that. Yeah, global pairing. Open this. So this is the process how you are going to enable your global peering. Okay. Okay. Just speak okay. Uh, today. Yeah. I yeah. Work on this. Yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. Wait on. Let me share my screen. Okay, now coming to to summarize Azure Cloud actually for the interview aspect. Okay. So, what is DevOps? DevOps development. Development. Development? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. No. So you can add Azure DevOps. So as a Azure administrator, Avinash. Yes. As a Azure administrator or as a as a Azure solution architect, you have to understand everything. Starting from your infrastructure side, coming to the development, coming to the testing, infrastructure as a code, as a DevOps engineer, everything. So, what is Azure DevOps? Any understanding on the DevOps front you have? Azure hmm? DevOps, uh, I, I mean, uh, for uh, development part. Okay. No, not really, not really. Actually, the DevOps is like uh, common for all clouds or the development lifecycle. Okay, what is SDLC? SDLC. Mm -hmm. Software development lifecycle. Okay. okay, software development lifecycle. So your DevOps is development, testing, plus operation. And in operation, your DevOps engineer your infrastructure engineer, your Azure administrator, everyone will come under operation. So means be as an administrator, Azure administrator, or as an Azure architect, we are also part of this day of journey. Okay, getting my point? So in development, software developer will come into the picture or your Selenium tester will come. But in operation, your DevOps engineer, infrastructure engineer, Azure administrator, storage administrator, getting my point? Azure Active Directory administrator, everyone will fall into this operation. So never say DevOps is a development thing. Clear, sir? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, so never say DevOps is a development, okay? Because when you are going to interview, they are going to ask all those questions related with the ops also. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about software developer. Okay. I'm not going to talk about testers. Okay. But I'm going to talk about day ops engineer. Okay. Yes. I'm going to talk about Azure administrator or infra architect or administrator okay i'm going to talk about these two things actually these two roles so what do you think uh, what is the role of devops engineer uh, manage storage account uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. and uh, everything mm -hmm. okay have you heard about ci cd pipeline ci cd Continuous integration and continuous deployment. CI CD pipeline. Okay. So actually, main role of the day of engineer will be to manage this CI CD pipeline pipeline, actually. Okay. So developer will be building the code. Okay. Building the code. 
and they will be dumping the code into some repository like you just search the citrix script on github right sir yeah what is github so to in today's half an hour session i'm going to uh, i'm going to share many things and this recording will be shared with you during weekend or, or today offline okay after party friday party spend some time and try to understand the things because these things are part of your interview because people are not ask every time okay how to build the vm it's not easy task right they want to understand if you are coming from the devops model or not and everyone should be devops certified everyone should be scrum certified scrum master certified csm what is github sir i no idea okay what is the storage sir storage uh, storage your voice is cutting in between sir i'm not able to hear completely no no uh, st storage where we put the all uh, resource put the all uh, details data data or you know repository so can we call storage as a repository yes so what is github repository okay it is also same kind of repository let me show you because your azure cloud training will be incomplete if you don't know github sir getting my point if you don't know github complete training is waste for you okay so what you have to do you have to go to github.com create your account here okay later on over the weekend just do the practice because github is going to help you for everything so what is github github is kind of repository where developers will be dumping their build code their software programming coding into the uh, into the repository okay are you able to understand this thing yeah yes and this is open source what is open source and what is the licensed services open source and licensed mm -hmm. Yeah. Open source. I mean, uh, company continue provide the support uh, and uh, everything. They are paid. All mm -hmm. the paid service is coming in day by day. Mm -hmm. And uh, license. I mean, they provide the full software access. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You have not paid it. So open source is like the free one. Okay. the free the free software free services whatever you are going to use as a free so when you are going to create your account into the github.com that will be your free account you are not going to pay for this right okay. getting my point open yes. source is free and it is available over the internet but the license thing are not available over, over the internet like your office product ms word ms excel ms powerpoint those are licensed software you have to pay up front to microsoft to use all those services getting my point yes clear so yes. uh coming to this uh, github i'm sure you got the understanding of the github okay so as a devops engineer as a infrastructure engineer as a azure administrator like you are already certified azure administrator and in few days or few hours you will be certified as your solution architect mr avinash right yeah. so you should know these things properly because that is going to help you to clear the crack the azure interviews or aws interviews getting my point yes so github you can use for aws also you can use for google cloud also clear yes okay so now coming to the next point i hope i'm able to make you understand if you have any question yes. you can ask you can ask sir okay okay 
looks like these things new to you but i have to make you understand because it is important without this you will you will not able to you know crack the interview these things are required okay so now coming to sir what is a scrum master but mm-hmm. what is scrum master no idea no idea so i will give you idea so scrum master is nothing scrum master is like so you have software developer okay you have tester you have day ops engineer okay you have uh, azure administrator and every will come under the day ops only right infrastructure and everyone day ops is nothing is operation you know day ops remember operation people will come under day ops now who, who who's po mhm who is po no idea product owner and pm is project manager why do we need project manager for the projects any idea yes why do we need project manager control the all things to control the all things that's right so a scrum master is like it is going to so you heard about waterfall model mm-hmm. what is waterfall model no idea so actually initially down the line 4 5 years back when software software developer were working on the coding code build right uh, their code build their programming so th- what was the process they were following the completely waterfall model in waterfall model avinash what happened right A developer is doing the coding and they are handovering it to testing team what testing team will do testing team will check the code if there any error then any, uh, any any you know testing yes, uh, flaws or logs they will revert back to software developer again they will be reversing again they will be reversing and all those things suppose in between any additional server required so the infrastructure team as a, as a administrator system administrator will be providing another server getting my point so yes. the process is like also call it water fucking model it's in recording okay <laughs> so we call it as uh, we usually call it waterfall no uh, not waterfall it's a water fucking model means it's a waste of time okay so like if three months project it is going to take six months to complete the project if we following this that's why shift in it from waterfall model to day ops engineering scrum master okay so there will be daily call in citrix also i ho- i'm sure there will be daily call into your team right at the we call it as a, a huddle meeting or team meeting kind of daily meeting you know team huddle or something yes. getting my point yes i get so in that team in that meeting everyone will be joining yes every uh, your manager will be joining your team members will be joining your project manager will be doing joining same way th- think about the development project developer will join tester day ops engineer will join product owner will join project manager so product owner is a sponsor getting my point yes product owner is a sponsor means the funds the capital investment which will be take will be you know with your project it will be sponsored by the product owner he is the owner of the product he is the owner of this project or product okay project manager is kind of a scrum master okay have you heard about jira dashboard jira or azure dashboard no ha huh? no sir azure azure dashboard i heard 
I am Azure, Azure, Azure DevOps dashboard actually, right? So in that dashboard, there will be user stories and everything will be jotted down and it will be follows as a backlog. So when daily call will happen, okay, Avinash, what is update yeah. on this? Ratnesh, what is update on this backlog? Getting my point? So there yeah. will be pressure on Ratnesh and Avinash to complete the task on time. If daily right. call will be there, you will come, you will prepare yourself, you come with your, you know, planning execution to update your product owner or project manager. Getting my point? Yes. So you have a little bit understanding what is DevOps, what is the Scrum Master, what is, you know, how the things work actually. Okay. Yes. Let me jump on another thing which is very important to you know. Uh, ARM templates. This is very important for you to know. Okay. ARM templates. Second thing, AWS, I will not talk here. I will discuss about Terraform. Okay. Have you heard about ARM templates? Azure Resource Managed Templates or Terraform? Have you heard about this? Hmm? Yeah, Azure template and uh, Terraform, not heard about it. Okay. Do you understand IAC? Infrastructure as a code. Okay. Avinash. Yes. Infrastructure as a code means now as your administrator or as your solution architect to be as a coder, as a programmer without, with, without doing scripting, you will not be able to successful in the cloud area. Getting my point? So yes. ERM yes. templates is going to create VM for you just to create a, a cluster for you, container services for you and Terraform also going to do, do the same. So what is difference between ARM templates and Terraform? Both are doing same thing. Infrastructure is a code. What is difference? ARM and Terraform. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this word cloud native? No. Hmm? No. Cloud native means the uh, and what do you do you understand CSP? No. Today I'm talking rocket science actually. <laughs> big big thing I'm talking about. Those things I didn't discuss, you know, in the uh, uh, previous sessions because I have to finish those things. You, you, I have to make you understand those terminology because this is going to help you in the interviews. Okay. So CSP is, what is ISP? Internet service provider. Now what is CSP? Customer service provider. No, cloud service provider, sir. So cloud service provider. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Simple. So I have given a great example and you, 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 you are able to understand the same thing, right? So CSP is nothing cloud service provider like Azure, AWS, Google Cloud. Okay, clear? Yeah. Yeah. What is cloud native? Cloud native means the tools, the services, which will be provided by the same cloud. Okay. That those services and tools will be known as cloud native. So uh, uh, Mishra ji, when I was started studying the cloud, you know, down the line five, six years, nobody was, you know, there to make me understand what is cloud native. Today, now your Pandes is here to make you understand in layman language, like in, uh, you know, like a, uh, like a layman actually. So what is cloud native? Cloud native is like CSP. Cloud native is like the CSP pro is providing the tools or services will be known as a cloud native tool or services. So ERM templates provided by Azure, right? Okay. So it's a cloud native. 
okay it's a cloud native and this terraform is hashicorp there is a company hashicorp let me show you because this is very important i think github you you are under, uh, you are able to understand that let me show you the terraform this is a hashi corp product okay hashi corp yeah so this is your yeah see terraform by hashikar right okay so also you create one account in terraform also okay i'm telling you this is going to help you longer run okay because if you need counter offer you have to increase your salary those terminology those things it is going to give make you cloud expert okay sir make sense so so now what is difference this is third party because it's not azure but terraform you can use for aws gcp and azure but arm templates you can use for only azure cloud clear now is it clear yeah yeah so that's why we are calling arm templates as a cloud native but terraform is not cloud native it's a third party service which is provided by hashicorp and what is the use of this uh, terraform to build your infrastructure to build your infrastructure to build your container services to build your cluster to build your storage to build your everything you know related with your networking your vnet nsg everything can you can play around with terraform okay even let me show you one example that will be so you were what we you were trying to do you were trying to create one build one vm and to join join the domain right so how to join domain of azure vm by terraform and you need not to remember anything just take google help sir okay yes because it's will be will be mad if will be remembering all those nonsense things okay don't remember anything just try to google things and try to understand because all the script all everything is available in over the internet you have to use it smartly that's it is making sense so what is written here in a part to join the azure virtual security domain mm -hmm. yes so that is called infrastructure as a code it's little bit complicated but i will try to make you understand so first thing even you can create your vm without logging to the portal command line okay, okay. if you remember in azure portal i have shown you cli you can connect and you must heard about uh, visual studio Yeah, right yes. so we uh, yeah visual studio through visual studio you can connect your azure cloud and you can play, play around so what you have to provide here in code what is your resource group what is your vnet what is your domain name right and what is the ou path and what is the administrator rights you know credentials it is going to join your domain from the work group to your domain for the windows machine and that script is already tested we are already testing into our azure wbd project in wipro for one of customer gsk okay getting my point yes so it's little bit complicated it 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 need lot of practice to make, to be successful into that but keep in mind what is iac infrastructure as a code which service or tool you can use to for that erm templates in azure or also you can use terraform to deploy to initiate and apply codes within azure cloud clear sir yes okay so i'm just giving you overview i'm not going to the deep dive deep dive we don't have that much time to do the deep dive of terraform or all those things okay now i'm coming to uh, this uh, now you have some understanding yes so you will not talk nonsense when you are talking about anyone right you will be in confidence now right sir yeah now i am going to talk about some 
CI side CD pipeline tools, which you should know. I'm not asking you to do the practical and labs everything, but you should know the terminology first. Okay. okay. So, Ansible. Okay. okay. Jenkins. Puppet. Okay. And Terraform already, I told you, Terraform I will not uh, touch upon here. So these three, especially these three, you know, so for the CI CD pipeline, for the DevOps engineer, Ansible is required, Jenkins is required, Puppet, you know, even Puppet is going to help you to replace your SCCM. SCCM deployment, the patching deployment. Uh, do you know the challenges with the SCCM for patching deployment and software installation? What is the challenge with the SCCM? Hmm? No, SCCM only uh, take care of uh, patching part and uh, mm -hmm. software deployment. Any challenges you have seen? Have you heard about? Actually, it's very slow. Yeah. Why it's very slow? Remember, when you are deploying any patch on your VDI or server, you have to reboot, reboot your server many times. Getting my point? Yeah. So if you are rebooting to, uh, uh, 10 times, how much time it is going to take? A lot of time. But the Puppet is like simpler way, which is going to take four hours from the SCCM, Puppet will do it within 30 minutes. That's the beauty of Puppet as a configuration manager. Okay. Ansible and Jenkins will be used by the DevOps engineer to deploy the code, the build, the CI CD pipeline. Okay. I'm not going to do, uh, detail. So I already told you what is DevOps, what is the Scrum Master, how the CI CD pipeline, what are the tools available in the market to use that. Okay. It, I, I, I can understand these things are not very easy to understand in one half an hour session. It, it, it required a lot of time, but we don't have time. We have to jump on this AWS workspace quickly because considering your project, you know, you are going to get project in AWS only. Yeah, workspace so, and IP string. Right. So I'm going to share the documentation for the AWS cloud first, how the infrastructure looks like, what is EC2 instance, what is S3 bucket, you know, how the VPC work. I'm going to share with fundamental documentation, okay, from the Google Drive. And I, I will also share you this uh, AWS workspace documentation, the AWS provided documentation, okay? You try to go through with those things over the weekend, if possible. If not, uh, it, it will discuss, you know, parallelly together, okay? And some more 303 and 304 documents for study material. 303, 304 is not possible, sir. It's too much time. It will take too much time. No, no. Only mm -hmm. use, uh, Study yeah, yeah, study material I will share with you. Yeah, because I'm all, already MCT certified. And so uh, today finally going certified 304. That's really nice. That's really nice. Sounds good, sir. Okay. So just in nutshell, let me just wind up things here. Uh, I have still 10 minutes. So uh, suppose for Azure cloud, for any cloud, what are things are required? Can you just... Recall those things. Azure. Remember our first day discussion? I am compute. I will explain you. If you are not able to recall, I will explain you. TV. Networking. Okay. Firewall, security, DevOps, and the last monitoring, right? Yes. Remember those things? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So but just only you have to add here, Azure. Okay. <laughs> Smartly do this. So what is Azure IEM? Azure Active Directory. And 
on premise active directory and third party solution is octa okay what is compute just like a virtual machine virtual machine containers container also okay what is the storage your blob storage your containers within the blob storage you are going to get containers your file services how you know all those things will come under this what is database your sql database oracle database there are two kind of databases sql and no sql what are the difference between these two sql and sql and no sql 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 data is i know no sql so no sql is so actually uh, as you know the databases we have like uh, sql and no sql so sql is like a schema master it will be there will be data modeling so same kind of data you can store in sql databases okay. but when you have no sql database for example mongo db dynamo db those are open source database and i need not to tell you again you again you what is open source you know already already right i already explained you what is open source okay sir okay so no sql is there is no data modeling there is no structure you can manage any kind of data within the open source or no sql databases okay clear and what is big data today i'm okay. today i'm talking about like a nasa scientist or isro scientist oh. <laughs> big, big, big data ha uh, big data yeah log data i think mm -hmm. big data big data for data analytics okay okay what is azure networking sir virtual network virtual network subnet nsg right micro segmentation what is micro segmentation vpn yes express route right so you have overlay networking within the azure cloud and you are going to use bnet subnet nsg vpn gateways express route what is firewall and security you are going to use azure security uh, azure security center remember and yes. you have azure sentinel also one of siem tool within the azure cloud okay what is deops i need not to tell you because we already discussed lot on deops engineering okay and the last not least monitoring like azure monitoring azure insight azure uh, you know azure uh, dashboard azure compliance azure policy all those things come under monitoring okay so okay. when you are going for any interview for azure cloud aws cloud what you have to discuss you have to discuss all these things starting from iam until monitoring that's a funda remember this starting from iam iam is nothing azure active directory okay compute is nothing your vm your containers simple as simple okay so i think we discuss a lot today related with our you know the uh, closing ceremony kind of do you have any question yeah. which i can answer quickly any confusion kind of or any add on something mishra ji because not your now you are also as your certified solution architect right 304 you are going to get today or tomorrow right what is your thought uh, now today, today. yeah today any question what's my question is uh, why we need uh, why hmm? when we need we need pairing for example hmm? Mm -hmm. If I have a single, I have multiple resource group mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Azure account. Mm -hmm. So each resource group keep own network. Yes, own minute. It has its own CIDR range. Yes. Okay. Try to understand. Let me tell you. Then you will understand why these things are required. see there are three methods there are like uh, three four options you have avinash okay you can go for multiple subscription getting my point yes so suppose you have one subscription for production one subscription for your development 
one subscription for your UAT or POC or test environment. So three subscription. In that way, you can manage your project. Another way, you have one subscription, and within the one subscription, you created three resource group. Getting my point? One is for production, one is for dev, one for test. And in that way, your all resources, your all resources will be man managed under your resource group or under your subscription. That's the common funda to manage your Azure cloud infrastructure in total. Okay, sir.